welcome back to the class everyone today we're going to be talking about a new phenomenon in galaxy of heroes and that is having a team with more than one omicron in it now this is something that we really need to talk about because omicrons are probably the most rare resource in the entire game and having one alone on a team in either gac or tw can already radically change it. So this starts to beg the question when we start to get all these teams that have more than one Omicron either kind of designed for them or just in general that can be applied to two different characters. We have to ask ourselves a very important question. Is it any good? Or really, is it worth it at all? Would you rather two completely separate teams with two different Omicrons or do you want one team with two characters that have two Omicrons? We will talk a little bit as well about certain teams or a certain team that is really good with one character that has two. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and start from the worst to best. So this that is kind of the order this is going to go in. And one of the things we're really going to hone in on, does this team punch up high enough? Is it making that much of a difference to have two of the most rarest resources on its team to really warrant it at all? Or should you just stay far, far away? So the worst team that can have two Omicrons right now, at least in GAC, is going to be the Admiral Akbar and Princess Leia one. And this is just a little bit sad because when it first came out, when Omicrons were first started to be applied and we had needed a bunch of GAC teams, it wasn't all that bad for two reasons. Number one, the standard for how good a team was back when it came out wasn't actually that high. It's gotten a lot uh, harder to be a good team nowadays. And on top of that, a lot of the characters that were originally used in this comp now have much better homes that don't really require any Omicrons. So let's go, let's look into a little bit as to what it does before we just completely slander it. I guess I guess we already did. So Admiral Akbar here at the start of the battle, all eyes gain tenacity up and they gain turn meter, they recover health, and we get a lot of assists. The really big issue here is there's nothing to stop things that just can kind of stay behind either damage immunity or something similar like nest protection up in fact i've used nest to solo an akbar lay a double omicron team and even on offense it can have the issue of timing out because while this turn meter and health recovery are great we're not really gaining any more damage so if you're up against say a crew that doesn't have or that has way too much health and defense and all that kind of stuff being able to use this and keep hitting them over and over and over again with more turn meter more health it doesn't really change anything uh the lay omicron is arguably even worse she basically grants retribution and tenacity up to all allies for two turns and they recover more health and protection same problem we're not actually getting to the heart of the problem we're not getting any more damage we're not being able to get through whatever the enemy has put before us and it's really conditional on a lot of things that just aren't guaranteed that being being able to gain turn meter being able to get buffs like there are there are plenty of ways to stop this through buff immunity or shock or whatnot and then yeah the other big issue is the team just isn't there anymore like stormtrooper han and fulcrum used to be two really cool components because fulcrum had a lot of damage and stormtrooper han is just kind of a good tank in general he now belongs to sauna in the max roster situation as well as fulcrum now is going to belong to seer and cow and then what you're just left with is just very bad so i guess I didn't want to spend too much time harping on Akbar and Princess Leia. But again, going back to our question, is it worth two Omicrons? Hard no. Even if you have nothing else to apply it to, don't apply it to them. Save it for something else. You will definitely need it later on and thank me later. Uh, second worst is going to be our Qui-Gon win team. And I do want to make this pretty clear. This is not a bad team, nor is the Qui-Gon Jinn Omicron bad. However, the combination of Qui-Gon Jinn's Omicron and Luminaris is just not worth it. So everyone, mostly everyone knows what Qui-Gon Jinn's Omicron does, but a lot of people probably don't know what Luminaris does, and there's good reasons for that. So basically, it turns her heal into a Dispel, Tenacity up. They also become immune to uh, turn meter reduction, as well as they gain 100% critical avoidance. On paper, it sounds really stinking great. However, CG made to put made sure to put in one caveat in there that just kind of makes the whole thing really suck. Other allies with protection up can't gain these bonuses, and these stacks of heal over time expire on all other allies who gain protection up. So the whole thing that this kit is built around becomes completely worthless the second Jedi Anakin uses his AoE and starts to gain, grant protection up to his allies, which if you know the Qui-Gon Jinn team, that's like the whole huge satisfying thing about it is one, one of your characters drops below 50% or Qui-Gon dies and you get this huge massive amount of damage and offense. You go to AoE, 
and you kill a bunch of people and then all of a sudden luminar's entire not just her entire purpose but her entire omicron there just went right out the window um in reference to our good friend mace here but overall it's just not that great you can kind of make the argument that you get the best of both worlds either your Jedi anakin is a weenie bunch and you have a bunch of protection up or he's not and you get all luminar stuff but i've as you can see, I have this Omicron. I have Qui-Gon Jinn's Omicron. I use this pretty consistently on offense, and it just doesn't actually change anything. There might be better value with Luminar, specifically on a JML team. Maybe if he ever gets an opportunity to beat Lord Vader, especially if Jedi Master Luke is one of your only Galactic Legends, there might be some warrant there. Uh, but as it currently stands with Qui-Gon Jinn, and even, I don't really even love this with Starkiller on defense, or maybe just in general, because the ai doesn't understand that this is now a cleanse so it only uses it like it's this and yeah it's just not very good i will say luminar is kind of fun to have here with cam because her max health gets converted into offense beauty of the cam unique so but you don't need an omicron to do that so again coming back to the question is this worth two omicrons no it's not not quite as bad as this you know new player trap here but it's not it's not good uh next up is going to be our hondo in dash one this one is okay, but not super freaking great. And the reason why, so Dash with Omicron pretty much means that everybody gets to be prepared all the time, regardless of what's happening. This ties super well with Vandor, because whenever he's prepared, he gets to revive another, and this kind of sucks, light side scoundrel ally. So this is pretty cool. You can't directly go after Dash. Uh, if you kill all three, she just comes back every single time. I guess if you're killing Ness first, which that would be really weird, she will also come back. Uh, the reason why this isn't super high up on the list is because since hondo is neutral and this kind of this isn't great he doesn't get revived so the pairing here isn't super great however hondo's omicron within itself is still pretty decent because it's going to change which counters you can bring against dash period one of the really good counters against dash right now is bounty hunters that can completely go before dash get contract annihilate dash and annihilate goes through the uh, revive that vander would have but then with hondo in here if you're gaining 25 percent turn meter right off the bat oh i don't even think we're looking at his omicron are we no we're not um i think it's this one if you have his omicron on here and he's gaining 25 percent turn meter per ally so 100 percent he's gonna go and he's gonna captive someone immediately right off the bat and that's just gonna screw up the entire counter so there are there are ways that this can still work i think Jedi Knight revan still kind of beats this but this is what omicrons really what investments in the game should be doing in general they should be thinning out the amount of counters that can be used against your teams because once you do this enough once you like isolate that only Jedi Revan can beat this and bounty hunters can't on this team and when you isolate a few other counters on another team you start to shrink what your opponent can actually clear prevent them from full clearing or at least cause a lot of hold issues so overall uh is it worth it again our question is this team worth two or omicrons I'm gonna say maybe uh, it depends on what other options you have out there to be able to do it. I would love this a lot more if Hondo got all the benefits of light side and dark side allies to the point where he could revive. I think the synergy would be a lot better. But as it stands, you can actually, you don't even need to go right after Vander. You can go right after Hondo. And that kind of hurts the overall synergy piece of it. Uh, so we're going to go with the hard maybe. But I mean, I I wouldn't take these off if I could. If I had the option. Different from Lunar. If I could, if I could take these off, I wouldn't. But I also... I have a more advanced roster to the point where I can get Omicrons from Galactic Challenges every single time. Uh, so now we're going to start to get into some of the really stinking good ones. And this one, this might, the placement of this actually might need to be changed a little bit. The reason why the Finn Zori team is here right now is because Zori has proven herself to really revolutionize the Finn team, really without Omicrons in general. Uh, and her Omicron does help a lot with that. It specifically right now is going in and stopping wampa for the most part or other counters like it because if the ally in the leader slot is not on a line force user aka finn um resistance uh what you, oh wow zori is stealth at the start of the battle or start, start of the turn all enemies without exposure are inflicted with exposed for winter which can't be evaded or resisted so when you're constantly stacking up exposes on the enemy this just synergizes overall with the kit really stinking well we're not going to read the whole thing of everything that has to do with expose and the resistance kit but it all revolves around it if you look into finn's leadership that's where you're getting your cooldown decreases from that's where you're gaining turn meter that's where you're stripping turn meter that's how the whole thing revolves around and one of the really important pieces here and i kind of already mentioned it is the fact 
that it is irresistible. A lot of the exposes on the Finn team are not irresistible, and this ends up causing a lot of issues because characters who either just have a stupid amount of tenacity or tenacity up or something like that to be able to stop it, you you kind of get destroyed. Like w Wampa will walk over this exact team right now if I do not have the Finn Omicron to protect it. And again, this goes back to kind of what we were saying about the Hondo team, where sure this doesn't make the team unbeatable we really do start to thin out the counters that can actually beat this um and this is why this probably actually needs to be ranked lower than the dash team because when you look at rose with omicron well you can't have two omicrons here uh this one's not that great like it doesn't i don't know it's not as bad as the luminarcron but all the resistance allies gain 10 percent offense first exposed to enemy and they gained uh five percent turn meter it really just helps the team do a little bit better of what it's already doing while those things are advantageous, again, the team loves exposes, the team loves offense, the team loves turn meter to kind of help bridge that gap that the old Finn lead used to be able to give. Uh, it's just still not overall that great. So I'm actually, yeah, we're going to we're gonna move this team's order just purely because it doesn't really fit. Um, overall, the question, does this team warrant two Omicrons? No. Zoris is probably worth it once the team is fully geared up and ready to go, but Roses really can't be warranted, whereas this one's more of a maybe. Uh, moving up to the Night Sisters. This one's new, so there's going to be a lot of, I guess, just speculation on my part from how good it's actually going to be. But I really, really like the concept. So when Asajj's Omicron first came out, and you look at it, it actually doesn't really change the viability of Night Sisters all that much. And the reason why is because it gave her a way to get healing immunity and reduce enemies' uh, max health and defense by 4% every single time she uses her AoE. It's actually really cool. It's really good. The only issue is... All the counters that beat Night Sisters before, they continued to beat it and really didn't change all that much. That being said, now with Marin on the scene, whoo, okay, yeah, she changes a lot. She gives them a way to have turn meter overflow. She has a much more consistent cleanse. She is able to continue very well the things that they're already good at, like plague and stuns and whatnot. And her Omicron not entirely sure if it's 100% going to be worth it or if the team is going to be able to hold its own. It's still very early in Marin testing to be able to know that. But whatever nice allies defeated or revived, which happens constantly, Marin gains 100% turn meter, which can be prevented, which is our, her whole deal. At the start of Marin's turn, inflict all enemies with one stack of plague for three turns. So you have this really good combo where Marin is providing a lot of survivability, where she's constantly coming back. She's constantly giving out plague, constantly calling in assist with the Mother Talzin lead, assuming someone is dead right now, which they probably are if she got a turn because she has someone has to die for her to get that 100% turn meter boost. And then what Assange is doing on the other end, Assange is going to be whittling down the enemy team so that you can actually get a kill. You're not just surviving, and you're not even necessarily having to kill people with plague because you have healing immunity and max health and max defense reduction to topple on to go with it. So again, back to our question: Is this team worth two Omicrons? A, we need more testing, but I I'm much more leaning towards yes. I think it's going to be slightly better than the hondo dash combo which means it's going to be pretty hard in the yes category so a little bit more testing but probably next up and these pro two probably need to be analyzed together but we have darth treya with either savage or talent ideally you probably want all three but that's not really what the video is about the video video is about is the team worth it with two omicron so first up looking up at treya treya's within itself is just absolutely amazing it's on unique so i wasn't going to be able to see it from there but she goes in and pretty much gives a stupid amount of stacking bonus protection along with a lot of other offensive capabilities and then a cooldown reset when you go under 90 percent uh health which is just really stinking good it allows nihilus to annihilate dark sign can get his hell by hatred off super quickly and then on top of that you're just now actually dealing real damage outside of max health damage from people assisting talons isn't all that good it does add some viability with her in this specific team she gets to have a lot of the added bonuses that darth nihilus and darth scion already have where every single time she's hit a trey is actually getting to partake in a in all of that where she gets debuffs and stuff uh, darth trey's damage starts to stack and then she gets these other little bonuses where uh, more max protection and offense as well being added into the effects with whenever she gets dark frenzy and pains out there uh, she gets extra damage she also gets a little bit more speed uh these aren't these are okay um doesn't isn't really needed to make the team work talent is very good on the team actually though and if you combine all three savage talent and treya it almost requires a mirror or galactic legend to be able to beat it and that's that's like one of the highest costs there is out there so again talent omicron not all that great does this team warrant it? Probably not. 
but Talon is still very good on the team, which I wanted to see these two together, but realistically, this team was probably more so there. Uh, and then one of our best, and the last one is going to be a little bit different, but probably the best double Omicron team is Treya and Savage. Oh, ju they just pair so beautifully together. So Treya, we already kind of talked about hers, all the benefits it gives. It does, however, leave a few weaknesses. If you have a team that can just come in and before anyone takes a turn, like bounty hunters or troopers can go in and just destroy Treya before things get started. Her unique's gone. And then the Omicron, well, it probably, it, it warranted a higher counter, so that's great. It didn't stop a higher value of counters that Savage could. So what Savage is going to bring to the table is A, a pre-taunt, and then B, on top of that, a consistent taunt where you just can't get access to Trey or Nihilus right away. And that starts to become super problematic because he's also going to give turn meter to them so all those teams that could go before and cause a lot of havoc they can't now because once you start hitting savage the trade team catches up real quick and stops whatever you have going on i've seen some examples where like really really good bounty hunters could come in and at least annihilate trey at a minimum but then typically get torn apart because by that point uh, she went under 90 percent health nihilus uh is annihilate went off cooldowns and then he got to annihilate someone really important again the full the fullness of the team should be talent here if you can spare her malgus does really like her too so there is that and then a little bit of a different exception because i know we didn't talk about star killer or malgus or like all those teams but this deserves at least a mention. This is a double Omicron team where two Omicrons are unbent. If there is one character in the entire game, and you know, this depends a little on roster, like do you have Ray? It's probably a really good question. But assuming you have most everything, Ben's two Omicrons are so good in conjunction with one another. We we're specifically talking about Force Dyad, which is a reminder, is the one that makes him constantly revive every single time that your leader takes a turn as well as obscured which is the four turn irresistible healing immunity each one of these is going to start to thin out the amount of counters that can be used against you again we've talked about this concept with hondo as well as with the night sisters i think even treya where the more counters you can thin out against your opponent the more squished you're going to put them into a position where they're going to have to start to make bad decisions and just not be able to clear you or they're, you're going to start to get lots of holds so what does force dia do it makes things super annoying for Jedi Master Luke in 3v3. Jedi Master Luke is significantly faster than all of his allies. He's going to keep on taking turns, and it is so hard to line things up so that you have Rey under 50% health. You kill Ben. You go back, and you can actually kill Rey before Jedi Master Luke takes a turn again, because sometimes he takes two turns in a row. So even if you have him getting the kill on Ben, you're like, oh, I probably have two turns, and then he's so much faster because he's a galactic legend that you end up getting stuck on a 5v5, it's a little bit easier because you have four allies obscured also this one oh this is such a pain this is pretty much hard stop c if i ever see a ray on defense with ben solo and whatever else and i'm looking through the abilities and i only see one omicron this means that c can now actually beat the team under a certain amount of circumstances this just stops that four turn healing immunity on a galactic legend even as fast as they are as previously mentioned the chances of you getting an ult and whirlwind back to back are super stinking high especially when you compare this or uh, put this together with jtr who also has a two turn irresistible healing immunity you can go six whole turns if rng lane lines up against you with not being able to heal and then you just die so overall really stinking good they need to be used in conjunction with each other again thin out your opponent's counters and be able to take them down so that is gonna be it for today tell me what you guys think if there's maybe another team that we missed or it let me know if you think we're finally approaching triple Omicrons. I know that the only one really around is Talon, but we'll see. Until next time, guys, stay awesome.